Hello everyone, welcome to Explore Electronics. Let's begin with chapter 2 of module 1, that is overview of C. So in this video, we'll be seeing uh, what is pseudocode and we'll learn about the history of C and some basic concepts of C and also we'll see what a basic structure of C program looks like. So let's begin. Uh, what is pseudocode? It's a high level description of a computer program. Uh, it looks similar to the program but it is not the actual program. It is just the high level description of what the program uh, steps will be. So it is for us to understand before writing the code we need to understand what steps we have in that code. Okay. So to define these steps we call it as a pseudocode. So it does not have any syntax or any rules to write this. It is just for the human understanding. We can say the programmers before writing the program to understand how the program flow should be or what are the steps that we need to uh, code. So this is called as pseudocode. An informal high level description of a computer program. That means it doesn't have any syntax. And what is the aim of writing the pseudocode? It is just to get outline of the code. It is used in planning of a computer program development. So as I said, it is for sketching out the structure of the program before the actual program is written. Let's see uh, some of the examples. So here in the first example, we are write, suppose we are writing a code for adding two numbers. So what are the steps involved in this? So uh, initially it should start the program and then your code should take the values. For example, if you are adding two numbers, say number 1 and 2, so you need to get the value. So that would be the first step. Get the values of number 1 and number 2. So this would be the first step. Now we need to calculate. That means we are adding two numbers. So this is the second step. After adding, after our calculation is done, we need to print the result. So this is the third step. And then the program ends. So this is the flow of uh, the program what you are going to write. So if you understand these steps it is easy to code it. And here we have one more example. This is to compute the area of rectangle. As usual we need to start the execution and get the length and width. So we need length and breadth to calculate the area. So we need to get those values from the user. And now we have to calculate it. Again calculation is multiplying the length and breadth. After uh, calculation, we need to print the result. So that would be the, and then ex execution will be ended. So this is the last step. So likewise, this is a simple example. So in the real world scenarios, uh, there will be lot of steps that will that is involved in a program. So we need to write down all the steps and understand the flow of a program and then write the actual code. Now. Coming to the C language, let us understand what uh, the C language is and why was it initially built, who developed the C language and uh, where all the C language is used. So here we can see it is a general purpose procedural language which was developed by Dennis Ritchie uh, in the year 1972. The C language was used originally in developing the Unix operating system. And C is a successor of B language. So initially there was a language called B and later it was developed into C language. And uh, we have uh, different C standards, K and R C standard and C, C, ISO. So these are the different standards. That means they provide certain set of rules that we need to follow when we are writing a C program. So let's see the characteristics of this C programming. It is very easy to learn. So we will understand what exactly a programming means by learning one language. And C is a general purpose programming language. And as I told you, it is a structured procedural language. So what is procedural language means? That means in any C program, there will be procedures. Procedures are nothing but functions. In a procedural language, what happens? The entire flow of a program is, is having functions. And these functions are nothing but there are some steps of a program. So these are nothing but the steps involved in a program. 
so in 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 the flow you can just call this functions anywhere in your program flow it is and it executes the steps one after the other that is why it is called a procedural language and it is portable and it can extend itself so these points you will get to know in the later point uh, for now just understand that it, it is a procedural language and where all the c programming is used so there are lot of lot of applications wherein uh, the c programming is used or the applications are itself built using the c language uh, in the high level you can understand that it is used in operating systems it is used to build the language compilers assemblers text editors and databases so if you want to understand the real world examples of where the c programming is used i can give you some of the most well known examples like adobe is written in c mozilla firefox that is also written in c and we have lot of things like apache web servers and uh, we have ruby so likewise we, we even have java which was originally written in c okay but now it is written in java x but originally when java was developed it was written in c and not only this when i say this operating system like linux and then we have um, mac os android so android was also originally written in c so there are lot of applications and software which are still depending on c so what are the character set that are used in c a character set is nothing but the valid characters that can be used in the program so uh, letters we can use the upper case all letters can be used and lower case we can use and digits from 0 to 9 and special characters and even the white space the space which we use and horizontal tab space also allowed so these are the uh, characters that we can use in a c program when we start writing the program we will understand what are the characters that we can use and what are the characters that we cannot use now let's understand the basic structure of a c program so how we are going to write the c program what is the structure there is a basic structure okay we need to follow that structure and make sure that whatever code we are writing we adhere to the structure documentation section as you can see it consists of the comments which increases the readability of that program for example if you are writing a program to add to numbers now instead of looking at the program code and understanding what that program is doing we can include the comments in the top section of the program so what this comment section will do it will tell the readers that this program is to add two numbers so just by looking at the comment we can understand what the program is doing so it is very essential to write comments that means you are documenting you are saying uh, the readers what exactly you are doing there not only in the uh, header section that means not only in the top but also in, in your entire program you can use this document section to uh, comment what that piece of code is doing and uh, when i say commenting there are two types of commenting as you can see here single line comment and multi line comment single line comment is nothing but if your comment is only one line uh, so you can just write it by, uh, by using two forward slashes so if you are writing two forward slashes and writing something that means it is a comment what the compiler will do as soon as it sees these two forward slashes it understands that this is a comment and it won't execute that so it just ignores that line it is just for our understanding and reading okay and if it is a multi line comment how do we write it a forward slash followed by asterisk symbol and your multi line so you you can have like two three lines of comments and at the end of the comment again asterisk symbol and a forward slash so this is also understood by the compiler that there is a multi line comment and at the end of the comment it will be ha uh, having the asterisk symbol and a forward slash now the next section is link section so what we do in link section we provide the instruction to the compiler to link some of the libraries to our program and in the global declaration section all the global variables will be declared and coming to the main function so in main function we again have two sections we have declaration and execution 
so these are the two sections in main function and in sub program section again in sub program section we have the declaration uh, and execution let's take an example and understand this uh, structure uh, document section gives us the program intention so that is program definition and we also have link section that is we are including the header files and in, we are including the libraries and in definition section as I told we need to define the global cons or we, we need to define the constants and this is a function section that means where we write our main function and inside that we have declaration part and execution part declaration is again we are declaring the variables or functions and in executable part we will be defining them and we have a sub program section this is nothing but our functions or you can call it as procedures or subroutines and then we can have any number of functions here which will be called in the main function and then after execution it will again go back it will return to the main function so main function only we will be starting and ending the execution right so right from the start to end of the execution it will be in the main function so here is a small example documentation section right they are telling that this C program is to display welcome to C world now this is the link section right so what does this hash include stdio.h so this is nothing but see uh, hash include is the keyword this tells the compiler that it needs to include what it needs to include is what we specify inside this so this is the standard library that contains all the input and output op like you can see in the program there is something called printf and inbuilt system functions okay so the compiler to link this function from here we are mentioning that in the link section so it will go to this particular library and it is going to add all the system functions into this program we still have many system functions like uh, so printf is one of the examples and we also have f open this is for opening a file and we have f closed for closing a file likewise we have lot of functions that we will be using in the program but they are contained in the standard io.h library this is a header file that we are including in our program and this is the main function and here we can see we have written void that means this main function will not return anything so what does this returning means so all those things I will explain when we start coding and this is the function name so name of our function is main and uh, here we don't have any arguments and inside this function what we are doing we are just printing this line so this printf is nothing but the system function as I told you and inside this we are we have to include the line inside the double quotes so whatever you want to display here you can include that and this is the semicolon so we need to follow this is the syntax to print anything on the monitor right to understand what are the different sections in the program thank you